Lord God, Father, with all our getting to get understanding that we are it's changed from the inside out. Beyond the storm, beyond the, storm, beyond the trial. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our sit-ups, our spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. I am Tony Brick Brown coming today with our word for our spiritual nourishment, spiritual growth, so that we can grow, change, so that we can progress and be impacted by the word and impact the world. And so I'm excited to be here today. We come here Monday through Friday. We have a word also Monday through Friday. We have morning prayer. If you like to join us for the morning prayer, please check out the information underneath this YouTube video. And while you're there, if you see subscribe in red, you not subscribe to the channel. If you click subscribe, afterwards you will see a bell. You can click the bell and you'll receive notifications when I upload videos. So we are going to continue our study on spiritual things. And we've been talking about prayer. We're going to continue on our study for prayer. If this is your first time joining us, welcome to the sit-ups, the spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. We pray and we get in the word. We get in the word and we pray. It's about being spiritually fit, exercising godliness according to 1 Timothy 4, 7 and 8, because it's profitable for us to exercise godliness. And so it's good to be uh, physically fit, but it's better to be spiritually fit. And so listen, I encourage you uh, to get your pen, paper, highlighter, and your Bible so that you can take notes, write down the verses of scripture, go back and do your own study. And so for those of you that are already a part of the sit-ups, welcome back. You know what to do. So gather your materials together. We're going to continue to talk about prayer today. Today, we're talking really about prayer um, everywhere, all the time, for everything right? Because this is the thing is that oftentimes, you know, we see somebody, they're standing in need, they are going through something, they're, you know, their family's going through something, they tell us about a problem, an issue, a struggle, a battle, a storm that they're in, you know, uh, something that's going on in or around their life. And we say things like, hey, okay, I'm going to be praying for you. I'm going to pray for you, you know. Um, and then many times, guess what? Believers say that and they don't pray. They forget um, what's wrong with praying right there? What's wrong with praying right then? What's wrong with praying about it so that you're coming in agreement, so that you're not procrastinating, so that the prayer can go forth right then? Where are you that you can't pray? What are you doing that you're too busy to pray? What is the circumstance that you have to hold off to prayer? So that's what I want to look at today is that you can pray everywhere all the time for anything. And so now let's look at um, we're going to start off going in 1 Samuel 7. We're going to open up in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come right now and we give you praise and glory and honor. We lift you up and thank you for your word. We thank you, God, that we are able to come and pray without ceasing, Lord God. Father, we thank you there's no limits. We thank you that we can pray according to your will and know that you hear us. That, Father, we know our help comes from you. We know with you all things are possible and nothing is impossible. So we thank you for the open door, the opportunity to bring our requests before you, to cast our cares on you, to cast our burdens on you, to seek you for wisdom and knowledge and understanding, for healing and deliverance and restoration, recovery for family, for Lord God, Father, everything that we stand in need of, we know that you are our source. And so we come today and we ask that you would feed us this spiritual bread, that your Holy Spirit would be our teacher. I decrease that you may increase, that it's none of me, but all of you, that you would have your way, that we would be on overflow, change from the inside out, never to be the same. Help us to be conformed into the image of your son, to be who you purpose us to be, that we could do the things you called us to do and bring glory to your name. We honor you, we love you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. So everywhere, for everything, all the time. We can pray. We talked about short prayers. We talked about uh, individual prayer. We talked about corporate prayer. We talked about hindrances to prayer. We talked about, you know, several topics as it relates to prayer. But take away the procrastination. Take away the excuses that make people forget to pray or miss out on the opportunity to pray right now, right here for everything. And so we're going to start off in 1 Samuel chapter 7, and we're going to look at verses 7 through 9. Now, keep in mind again, for one, if I go to the scripture before you get there, just simply click pause because this is a video, right? And then you can go back and push play. Secondly, 
You want to go back. You want to write these down so you can go back and study and read around them because I'm focused on this topic right now. And it's always good to go and read around verses of scripture so that you can get full meaning of what in the world is going on. Because the more you study, the more revelation you gain, the more insight you get, the more wisdom you have. And so here, we're looking at 1 Samuel chapter 7, verses 7 through 9. And it simply says this, when the Philistines heard, that the children of Israel were gathered together to Mizpah. The lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And the children of Israel heard it. They were afraid of the Philistines. And the children of Israel said to Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, that he will save us out of the land, out of the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it for a burnt offering holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him. Now, I'm going to do verse 10 also. I was going to stop at verse 9, but verse 10 says, And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomfited them, and they were smitten before Israel. Listen. In the midst of the battlefield, when the enemy is coming to attack, when we're at war, right? The children of Israel, the enemy was coming at war to attack. But in the midst of the battlefield, Samuel cried unto the Lord. He prayed unto God for the children of Israel. They were afraid of the, of the army of the Philistines that were coming. They were afraid of the enemy. But they called on Samuel to cry out to the Lord. Samuel, the prophet, Samuel, the man of God, he began to cry out for the children of Israel, for this battle that was before them. And the Bible says that the Lord heard him. And as he was, as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines, the enemy, was drawn near to the battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with great thunder on that day against Israel the Philistines, against the enemy. He fought for the children of Israel. And so this is the thing. In the midst of the battle, when people are in the midst of the battle, if you're in the midst of a battle, in the midst of a storm, in the midst, right? You're going through it. You're being, you're under attack. Or somebody comes to you and they're saying, you know, they're going through an attack. They're going through a storm. They're in the midst of a trial. Pray now. Pray then. Don't say, well, I'm going to pray for you. No, pray now. What if Samuel would have said, well, I will. I'll pray for you. No, the enemy was already approaching, already, you know, getting right there, right up on the children of Israel. There's no time to wait. What is the reason for waiting? Why am I going to pray for you later? Why am I going to pray for me later? Pray now. Pray on the battlefield. Pray in the midst of it. Pray when the enemy is coming. Pray when you see the attack approaching. Pray now. Pray quick. Pray consistent. Pray everywhere, all the time, for anything. He's praying for victory over the enemy. God hears him, and God gives him victory. Look with me in Nehemiah chapter 2. Nehemiah chapter 2. There's no excuse. People are like, well, you know, I can't pray. I'm at work. Or I can't pray because there's people around. Or, you know, well, you know, I'll pray for you later because right now, you know, we, you know, we're in this meeting or we're going through this. No, right now, you know, you could be in a meeting. But if somebody comes up and says, hey, you know, I lost a loved one or I'm going through this trial or I just lost my job or, you know, I'm about to lose my home or, you know, I, the doctor told me blah, 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 or I'm going through the sickness, or I don't feel good today, or, you know, or, you know, a family member is going through something, or marriage is going through something, hey, let's pray, right? And so here, Nehemiah chapter 2, now we, you have to go back if you're not familiar with the story of Nehemiah, but Nehemiah, um, you know, was serving the king in the palace, and, you know, uh, the walls of Jerusalem were, you know, in, in, in shambles, in rum, rum, rubble, had been burned down, destroyed by the enemy when the children of Israel were taken into captivity. But now um, it's been years and it should have been rebuilt, but it wasn't, right? And so Nehemiah hears about it and hears that the people are in a bad way, you know, and, you know, back where he's from. He's not there now. 
right? He could overlook their need. He could just say, well, at least I'm not back there. I'm not in their situation. I'm serving here in the palace. I'm good. But he wasn't, right? He fasted and he prayed and he sought the Lord. And so now he wants to go there and he wants to leave the king so that he can go and rebuild the wall. Now, he, you know, he's in the midst in the palace before the king. You weren't supposed to come before the king. He was the king's cupbearer. He wasn't supposed to come before the king, you know, just, you know, discouraged looking and looking down. You could be killed for that. But he comes and he comes uh, and it tells us in chapter two, the focus is verses four and five. But, um, but I'm going to start in verse one. And it says, and it came to pass in the month Nisan, the 20th year of Artex, Artaxerxes, the king, that wine was before him. And I took up the wine and gave it unto the king. This is Nehemiah. He's the cupbearer. He makes sure that there's no poison in his wine and different things like that. So he says, now I had not been before time sad in his presence. Again, you're not supposed to come in the presence of the Lord. I mean, the presence of the Lord, the presence of the king with a sad countenance. So in verse two, it says, wherefore the king said unto me, why is thy countenance sad? See, seeing thou art not sick. This is nothing else but sorrow of heart. Then I was very sore afraid. So now he's afraid because the king is like, why do you have a sore countenance? You're not sick. And so in verse three, it said, and I said to, unto the king, let the king live forever. Why should not my countenance be sad when the city, the place of my father's sepulchers, lieth waste and the gates thereof are consumed with fire? Then the king said unto me, for what dost thou make request? He said, what do you want? What do you ask it? And it says, so I pray to the God of heaven. And I said unto the king, if it please the king, and if thy servant have found favor in your sight, that thou wouldest send me unto Judah, unto the city of my father's sepulchers, that I may build it. Listen, it tells us right there in the palace, in the presence of the king with a sad countenance, he stops and he prays to God. He's not supposed to have a sad countenance before the king. He's in before the king where you had to have, you know, this honor for the king. You could lose your life. You could lose your whatever, right? You can't just do whatever you want before the king. But he stopped right there and he prayed before he even said to the king what it was that he desired, right? And so the Bible tells us in verse six, the king said to me, the queen also sitting by him, how long shall your journey be? And when will you return? So it pleased the king to send me and I set him a time. And then it goes on to say the things that the king sent him with to give him favor on his journey. So God heard his prayer in the midst of the palace before the king, right? Asking something that, you know, was kind of out of the way, out of the ordinary. But he did it right then because there was a need. So again, everywhere for everything, like all the time. What? You can pray. Look, turn with me to um, uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. let's go to Matthew 26. Matthew 26. And while you're turning there, I just want you to remember, even Jonah prayed from the well, from the well. These little cartoons and all this crazy stuff they got on TV have your mind going crazy. He prayed from the fish's belly. He was swallowed up by a fish that God had prepared to swallow him up when he tried to run from the presence of the Lord and go in the opposite direction from whence he was being sent. And so now when he's in the belly of the fish, he begins to pray. And to praise. Why? Because everywhere, all the time, for anything, you can pray. So now we're in Matthew chapter 26. And in Matthew 26, we'll begin in verse 36. And it says, now this is when Jesus is going to the, he's in the garden, is before he's going to be arrested. It says, then cometh Jesus with them unto the place called Gethsemane, Gethsemane and said unto his disciples, sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with them Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, which is James and John, even unto death. Tarry ye here 
and watch with me. And he went a little further, fell on his face, prayed, saying, Oh, five, oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. We know that he prayed three times there. The disciples went to sleep, depending on which version you read. Um, every one of the, the gospels, though, refers to Jesus being in the garden and praying before he was arrested, right? He knew that what was before him. He knew the pain that was before him, the crucifixion. He knew the pain that he would suffer, spiritual, mental, physical, emotional pain. He knew the mocking. He knew everything that was before him. But he prayed when it says that his soul was exceeding sorrowful even unto death. He had the disciples with him. They were asleep. So he was basically alone. So when you're feeling down, when you're feeling sorrowful, overwhelmed, Luke talks about it, that he was sorrowful to the point that he was agonizing, that it was like his sweat was like drops of blood. So when you're in a situation and it seems like it's the most difficult thing that you're facing, you don't know how you're going to go through it. You're wishing and hoping that God can take it away from you, but you know that there's some things you have to endure. What do you do in that place, in that time? You pray. It doesn't matter. You know, some people think, well, I already got, you know, it's already here. It already happened. What am I going to pray for? No, you pray. Because when you look at it and look, it lets us know that when he prayed, an angel came and strengthened him. Because sometimes it's just for the strength to endure what we need to endure. Sometimes it can remove what it is that is before. Sometimes it's just to give us what we stand in need of so that we won't quit in the midst. But whatever it is, we need to be connected to God. So in the midst of this, in his agonizing, in his sorrow, right, he prayed. Alone, he had to pray. There were people with him, but they weren't praying in agreement with him. They didn't understand what he was going through. Sometimes people don't understand what you're going through and you want to quit. You want to give up. You don't want to endure what's before you, but you got to stop and you have to pray. Everybody can't go where you're going. Everybody can't do what you're doing. Everybody's not going to understand what you have to go through. You have to pray. Then look with me. And um, let's see. Let's go to Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Mark 1, 35. Everywhere, for everything, all the time. It says in Mark 1, verse 35, In the morning, rising up a great while before day, he, which is Jesus, went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. Sometimes you just need to be off by yourself. Corporate prayer is amazing. It is powerful, but so is solitary prayer when it's just you and God. Jesus talks about going in your prayer closet. There's times that we have to be able to pray alone. We have to pray before the madness of the day. That's why we do our 6 a.m. prayer Monday through Friday, because it says in the morning, rising up a great while before day, before people could chase him down. People are looking for him. When you read through this chapter, you'll see they're looking all over for Jesus once he goes up there and he prays. And when they finally find him, it's like, where were you? He's looking for you. But there has to be some time where you're connecting with God before the madness, before people are seeking you, before people are calling your name, before people are calling your phone, before you go to work, before you connect with people, you need to connect with God. And then, um, let's see what else. Let's go to Luke 6 and 12. Luke chapter 6, verse 12. Luke 6 and 12. I just want you to see there's various places. It's like we limit it. Oh, it's a prayer line. Or, oh, we pray at church. Or, oh, you know, when I got up in the morning, I thank God for another day. No, throughout the day, when the word says pray without ceasing, that means everywhere, all the time, about everything. So in Luke 6 and 12, it says it came to pass in those days that he, that's Jesus, went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer. Now, the one we read in Mark 135, it was up early before dawn, before daybreak. Now it's all night in the mountain. He's praying all night. So it doesn't mean just in the morning. It doesn't mean just in the evening. It doesn't mean just 6 and 12 and 6. It doesn't mean when the church is going on a fast and prayer. No, in the morning, all night. Um, look at Luke 5, verses 15 through 17. Luke 5, verses 15 through 17. Actually, 15 and 16. Luke 5, 
Actually, I'm going to do 15 through 17. It says, but so much the more went there a fame abroad of him and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmity. So you're looking at these masses and multitudes of people that are coming to him to be healed from their sicknesses, from their infirmities. And it says in verse 16, and he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. Oftentimes we're wondering, well, why can't I operate in the power? You know, the Bible says that greater works we would do and we're supposed to be laying hands on the sick and they were covering, casting out demons in Jesus name. But we don't see those signs and wonder wonders anymore. Maybe God doesn't do signs and wonders anymore. Maybe that was just then. But no, it's because we don't do what Jesus did. Now he's in the wilderness off by himself praying. And that is what gives us the power that we need is the connection with the Father. So we're led by the Spirit. So we're walking in the Word, abiding in the Son. You can't just get up and think that you're going to operate in the power of the Holy Ghost and you don't have a prayer life. So here he is. He's healing people. Then he goes and withdraws himself in the wilderness and prays. He's connected all the time. So in verse 17, it says it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Why? Because Jesus had been praying and connected and he was, you know, it's, it's like we should always be ready to pray for somebody to be healed and believe it. Pray for them to be delivered and, and believe it. Pray in a situation for somebody to gain peace. Pray for our own situation, our own circumstance and believe God in it. But if we are not having a prayer life already, we're not going to be ready just to drop and pray because we are not accustomed to it. It's like, we don't know. Well, I don't know. You know, you get in a crowd of believers and you say, well, somebody pray. Well, I don't really know how to pray. What do you mean you don't know how to pray? Well, I don't pray like they pray. Pray like who prays? Get a prayer life. You should always be ready to pray. Always ready to go before the Lord. The Bible tells us in Luke 18 and 1, men ought always pray, right? And not faint. And so then also when we look in Luke 18, Luke 18 and 1, Jesus says, men are always pray and not faint, right? And so then in verse uh, in Luke 18, verses 10 through 14, it says, two men went up in the temple to pray. The one, a Pharisee, the other, a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I'm not as these other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalts himself shall be abased and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. See, people are so worried about, I don't know how to pray. I don't know what to say. But you look at this publican who's, who's haughty exalting himself. I'm glad I'm not like everybody else, Lord. I'm glad I tithe. I'm glad I fast. You know, I'm not like them. I'm not an adulterer. That's arrogant prayer. People are so, you know, you know, you're so much thinking about that they're supposed to pray in a way that sounds so holy, but the humble publican, right? Because the Pharisee was the one that was pride and haughty and exalting himself, but the publican, the tax collector, the, the one that acknowledged he was a sinner, that's not a fancy prayer. He said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And Jesus said, this man went down to his house more justified than the other one, right? Because if you exalt yourself, God is going to humble you. But if you humble yourself, God will exalt you. It's not about fancy words. It's about coming to God humble, coming in faith, come and trust in him, right? And so just a, a few verses for you to write down. Just write down Acts chapter 10, verse 9. When it talks about, you know, on the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew near unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. He went up on the housetop on the roof and prayed. Doesn't matter where you are. Write down Acts chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. Um, This is the... Well, actually, yeah, just write that down. It's at the riverbank, praying at the riverbank. Write down Acts 21, verses 1 through 5. The focus is on verse 5. It says, when we had accomplished those days, we departed and went our way, and they all brought us on our way with wives and children. 
till we were out of the city and we kneeled down on the shore and prayed. So now they go outside the city. They're on the shore. They're on their knees praying. And then Acts 28, 7 and 8, write that down. It says, in the same quarters were possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid hands on him and healed him at the bedside. It could be in a home. It could be in a hospital, right? Nursing home, wherever it is. You pray for healing. You pray, um, you know, when you're in, in trouble, when you're facing something enormous before you're feeling sorrowful, agonizing over something, when you're praying in danger, when you're praying um, in on the battlefield, when the enemy is attacking you, others are coming against you. You can pray in meetings. You can pray on the shore. You can pray in the mountain. You can pray all night. You can pray in the morning. You can pray in solitary places. You can pray when others are hearing you. But you pray everywhere all the time about everything. And so today I want you to go back and meditate on these verses of scripture and make it make it a part of your day. Each day, beginning today, that when somebody needs prayer or you need prayer, you stop right then and you pray. You can, you can pray in your home. You can pray in the workplace, in a meeting, over the internet, over the phone, face to face, with strangers, with enemies, with people that are your family, people that you love, your neighbor, whatever it is. When people need prayer, you stop and pray. When you need prayer, you stop and pray. When something's going on, you don't wait. Don't tell everybody you're going to pray for them later. Don't tell everybody, oh yeah, I'm going to be praying for you. I'm gonna... No, pray now. Pray now, all the time, everywhere right? For everything. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name and we honor you. We thank you for your word and the opportunity to come before your throne, God. Help us, Lord God. Father, that we are always open to pray without ceasing. For family, friends, loved ones, strangers, and even enemies, Lord God. Father, face to face, over the internet, over the phone, Lord God. Father, in meetings, at work, at home, Lord God, on the street, in the store, at the bank, wherever we are, Lord God, help us to be open, to be willing, Lord God, to stand before your throne, to stand in the gap for others, to cast our cares on you, to trust you in every situation without waiting and in our faith, but knowing that with you all things are possible, that you're everywhere at the same time. And so, God, we thank you today. Help us, Lord God, Father, to stay connected with you, to seek you for strength and for wisdom and for guidance, to seek you for healing and for deliverance and restoration, for comfort. And Father, we know with you all things are possible. Our help cometh from the Lord. So we thank you, Lord God, for who you are and all that you've already done. We thank you for what you're doing now and we praise you in advance for what you're about to do. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and say hallelujah and amen. God bless you. Love you to life. I will see you on our next sit-ups. It's time for sit-ups, all oh, sit-ups, spiritual impact training, using prayers and scripture.